think a lot of people think that 2022 was a bear market and they think it's over. They think uh, they can start loading up and that we're, we're, you know, blue skies ahead. But the reality is I think a lot of people are getting in not realizing we haven't had a stage four decline. And so a lot of people don't realize how severe these are going to get. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for February 21st through February 28th, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature 2022 Silver Maples at $3.40 over spot. Silver Maples were the first silver sovereign coins to be minted at 4 nines fine purity and remain one of the most in-demand and recognized coins today. They come 25 to a tube, 500 to a box, and are available at the lowest premium we've seen in more than a year, at just $3.40 over spot. Canadian maples are also IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order this special or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend Chris Vermeulen from thetechnicaltraders.com. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me, Elijah. Well, it's great to have you. I did want to get your perspective on what is happening to the stock market right now. You've talked about how you believe that the stock market is currently in a crash. If you could explain for our viewers kind of what the stages of a bear market are and what stage we are in now and heading into. Sure. Yeah. Well, let's take a look, uh, look at this infographic that, uh, that I created. And, and so if we were to kind of just step back, what are the stages or what is stage analysis? I got this from Stan Weinstein. He wrote a great book on how to identify these stages. And long story short, there's four of them. Uh, stage one, he calls the basing stage, uh, which I've colored red on this chart because it's kind of a dead zone. You don't really want to be messing around with something that's just flatlining and chopping sideways. Stage two is a bull market phase, which is green because there's opportunity. Stage three is a high volatility kind of topping phase in the market. And then stage four is a, a big market reset. And I've colored that green as well because there's huge opportunity in trends. Stage two and stage four, a lot of money can be made uh, as long as you're, you're on the right side. So where I think we're at right now is in this stage three phase for the stock market. Uh, and, and it, you know, if we go into a stage four decline this year, it's going to do a lot of damage to a lot of different assets. And, you know, when we look at it from a kind of market sentiment point of view, what most people are thinking and feeling the market is, we are seeing a lot of people get back into growth stocks over the last month. And they're in this complacency stage. I think a lot of people think that 2022 was a bear market. And they think it's over. They think uh, they can start loading up and that we're, we're, you know, blue skies ahead. But the reality is I think a lot of people are getting in not realizing we haven't had a stage four decline. And what's important here is the last two stage four declines, people, uh, you know, they're, they're big. There was the, the 2000 tech bubble was one. The 2008 market correction, uh, the financial crisis, that was a stage four decline. So those are the two most recent ones. And so a lot of people don't realize how severe these are going to get. And the scary part is these declines are so big uh, and they catch a lot of people off guard that, you know, we've there's reports done, you know, just between 2008 and 2009, there was over 6,500 suicides directly related to falling equity prices. So what we're going into, what a lot of people don't understand is how severe things could get. And it's it's you got to be really cautious just because of that. And, you know, when we go and take a look at the overall cycle, like you were talking about the economic cycle and where we are in the stock market cycle, you know, last year we saw energy sector do really well. This year, precious metals and miners it came back to life. They were leading the way higher over the past several months. And now they're starting to roll over. And typically those are the last two major sectors before the stock market, which is this blue cycle here, tops out and starts to go down. And then, of course, uh, the economy is the yellow cycle and it always lags. Investors 
see things slowing. They start to move out of companies ahead of, of actual real earnings. They can, they can see things slowing down. So the economy tops out after the stock market, which throws a lot of people off. They're like, why is the stock market selling off right now? We're not in a recession. But if you're a financial, you know, analyst and you look forward into the numbers, you can be like, well, we are in a recession. It just hasn't come out on the data yet, but businesses are slowing, layoffs are picking up, uh, interest rates are going up. So that's the big high level picture of where I think we are in terms of the, the whole stock market cycle in stages. Now, what is telling you technically that we actually have had that euphoria stage um, and that we are in kind of the stage three, as you mentioned, the complacency stage, what technically is um, on a technical anal analysis basis is telling you that we actually have hit that euphoria stage and we're past that? Well, I would say the the second half of 2020 and the very beginning of 2021 was the euphoric kind of blow off phase. Uh, everyone was pretty much forced to stay at home. Government started dishing out all kinds of money. Everybody went from sports betting to betting on the on the stock market and everything exploded. Sectors and stocks rallied hundreds, thousands of percent, depending on the stocks. Millions, tens of millions of new people piled into the stock market that had ne that had no interest in it, didn't really know much about it, but it was the only thing to do. And it just drove prices to ludicrous you know, levels. And then we had a big crack and a, a really good view. If you look at the profile of this of this chart in general, you get the blow off phase and then it breaks the, the uptrend, goes into a complacency stage and then a stage four decline. Take, take a look at um, let's take a look at the the ARK ETF here. And if we were to just zoom out of how this played, the ARK ETF was the perfect scenario of what happens during these phases when the mass market participates we had the the 2000 uh, the 2020 covid crash and then everybody piled in and ke kept going higher and then it had this huge blow off phase and had a very sharp correction and then we went into this complacency stage where the market was digesting it was getting ready for the next move which is to the down stage and then we've gone into this stage 4 decline when it comes to uh, growth stocks, and they, they're still out of favor. I think this ETF will end up probably being in the high teens uh, by the later this year. So we're far from being over. But the growth stocks are like one of the first pockets that really top out. And they topped out well, you know, you know early 2021. So a long time ago. Um, so that's, that's a visual of where the that was the hype phase when everybody was in everybody thought they were stock market superheroes and now they've all lost their shirts so that is over we've what i believe this was the parabolic euphoric blow off phase and now everybody's burned and now it's losing its momentum and um, that and now the stock market is about to kind of follow suit the the overall indexes lag so while the growth stocks topped out a year and a half ago two years ago um, the stock market continued to keep going higher for pretty much another year before it really topped out. Uh, and it's a much slower beast. It's like the tide of the ocean going up and down. And so the stock market's finally, you know, on the verge of going into that stage four decline because we've already had this, what I think is the, the euphoric uh, greed phase where everybody kind of rushed to the same same time and the same things. And, and now they all got burned. Now, it seems like in that kind of situation, a lot of people rush to cash and rush to the dollar um, bonds. It seems like we already saw a huge rally in the dollar. But do you think it could go higher from here? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are calling thinking that the dollar has topped. And if, if we take a look at the, the dollar index here, let's let's just zoom out. If we go and look uh, the last time when we got into a. Um, uh, a stage four uh, decline. We saw the the 2000 uh, multi-year bear market. The dollar ripped to the upside. Huge move in the dollar index. Uh, we're seeing that over here already. We're already seeing a big move into the dollar. And it's had this very strong pullback. It's had about 11, 12 percent pullback uh, recently, which people think that, you know, the top is in for the dollar. But the reality is, just like we saw last time, we saw about 11 to 12% pullback in the dollar just before it took off and hit some crazy high levels during the stage four decline. 2008, once the stage four hit, we saw the US dollar scream to the upside. So we're really just set up for 
another major stage four decline, one that's going to wreak havoc for businesses, individuals, people's health, and the dollar is most likely going to rip to the upside, whether it goes back to the recent highs that we saw or up to these highs we saw back over in 2002, 2001. Uh, who knows how high it's going to go? But that's what I see unfolding. I think all this is going to catch a lot of people off guard. So many people are are thinking the stock market's good to go. They think the dollar's topped. Uh, but if this is the scenario, then we're going to see this trickle over into the commodity space in a big way. A big rally in the dollar is going to put a lot of pressure on metals. They're going to pull back. I think you and I spoke about this uh, last time, is that I think the dollar is going to have a big move. And we're going to see precious metals and miners pull back fairly significantly. And it'll be that last major pullback in metals before I think they start a multi-year, probably a three to five year rally. And we see all time new highs for all of those metals and the miners. Uh, it's just we're not there yet. This is kind of the where we're leading up to it. And I think after the dollar puts in potentially this next great big rally and run up into this level, then then it's lights out for the dollar. It is going to go down and down and down, just like it did in the last scenario where it, it sold off for years and gold rallied from 275 to 2000. So we're getting closer to this really exciting stage for precious metals. And what will be really exciting is we have the opportunity to buy probably more gold and silver at a discount several months from now if you can get physical. Uh, and then we're going to see, I think, that it take off. And anybody who's got physical, I think, will do very well because if we do see precious metals scream higher uh, over the next five years, I think if you have the physical, you're also going to get some huge premium on being able to deliver physical to somebody versus just trading an ETF. You catch the move, the physical, you actually have the piece in your hand that people are willing to pay an extra premium to get it because it might be almost impossible to get physical metals three, five years from now, depending on how um, the precious metal market unfolds and how many people want to move into physical, right? The world always goes from one extreme to the other. It's like the yin and yang. They all were in precious metals once. They Everybody went into cryptos, which is just digital uh, nothing in a, in a sort of way, to now they're probably going to eventually go back to physical having chunks of gold. Like everything goes from one extreme to the other. So it is going to be a very exciting, I think, year. It's going to be really volatile, ups and downs. Uh, looking forward, though, I mean, I think for precious metals, the perfect storm is really just starting to brew and it's going to be an opportunity to get some. And um, and then it's off to the races probably after this year at some point. Could you share the charts of both gold and silver here, kind of the price points that you're looking at right now and where you think they could fall short term? Yeah, so short short term, I do think gold could come down to around fifteen or fourteen hundred, which is a, a pretty good pullback from where it was, and and that won't be anything out of the norm. I think from the high that we saw over the past uh, two years down to that level is about a thirty four percent correction in total. And believe it or not, in two thousand and eight, during the last stage four correction, gold pulled back about thirty four percent. So the current technical setup for gold is pointing to a similar type of pullback from the high down to uh, roughly that level. Uh, so I think that is the kind of the extreme potential downside for gold, uh, which will be more or less an opportunity for physical uh, people who want to hold physical. Um, the upside target using really uh, basic analysis, we can use um, Fibonacci. Uh, if we pulls down to that level, the first uh, two key targets are going to be uh, back up to uh, where uh, about 2028, somewhere in that area, which is more or less the previous high that we saw over the past two years, and then all the way up to about 2400. And um, if we were to go back in time even further to the beginning of the previous super cycle, because that's what we're starting here is a new super cycle. If we were to take that analysis and put it on here, we're looking at about 2700 as the first major leg up after this year. So that's, it's pretty exciting, 2,400 to 2,700. Um, and, and really those are the most conservative kind of upside targets. I, you know, once gold or a commodity hits this bullish phase, 
uh, it can blast past those levels and just keep on going and going. Uh, and, and we'll be able to analyze the charts as they're going to figure out how much momentum it has, where the next levels are. So those are the targets for, for gold. If we take a look at silver, uh, silver's a, a, a pretty wild beast, but it, it's back up into this $48 range. And silver's got that characteristic that who knows? I mean, it could it could skyrocket to 100, 140 um, on those extremes just because of liquidity, just because so many people want to move into silver. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, there's, they're talking about gold-backed currencies. Um, and the market always has a way of doing what you least expect. So I know a lot of people are expecting silver to have some of the biggest gains, but the market always throws a curveball. For all we know, gold could actually be one of the one the metals that actually has the biggest gains. It might actually go from being the kind of more consistent dormant metal to something that goes, you know, parabolic and just skyrockets and everybody's fighting over trying to get gold and silver might not be as popular. Who knows? Either way, they're both pointing to substantial gains, you know, once this market I think has a stage 4 decline. Um, and the dollar rallies and we see the forced liquidation, margin calls, people are going to be scared. They're just going to be forced to sell positions. And that's that drops the price of commodities and miners and just, you know, flushes the market out. And we need that to happen before I think we start the next super cycle leg to the upside. A timing is always very difficult, but as for the stage four decline and the pullback in the metals, do you have a rough estimate for our viewers here? I would really like to see this coal market correction happen uh, this year. It would be nice if we could see everything happen this year and then next year uh, everything takes off. Um, there is a potential setup that we see something in the stock market, kind of like the 2000 market top, 2001, where it actually, the stock market could struggle for several years. It could just keep trading sideways or, or lower um, and drag it out over time instead of a big parabolic, you know, liquidity crisis and everything sells off and drops sharply. It might continue to trickle out and, and drag out. Um, so the stock market, I'm a little unsure as how many years it'll take to to flush out and then recover and start making new highs. But I do think once we've seen most of the downside in the equities markets, which I think will unfold this year. I think gold and silver will be some of the first things to bottom before the stock market and then start to rally. Um, and the dollar will top around the same time that gold puts in a bottom. So I'm really hoping late this year uh, all this will happen. And um, and then next year will be a pretty exciting year for the commodity space. It does seem like if you look back at 2008 or um, the COVID crash, Precious metals seem to recover quite rapidly uh, after that. And I did want to get your perspective because you did mention physical metal. And I know just a few months ago, it was very difficult to get physical metal. Premiums were through the roof. I know in 2008, it was very uh, difficult. I know the Miles Franklin was out of metal for, I believe, three months uh, during the 2008 crisis. So your perspective, again, and kind of the ability to get metal if we do kind of see this pullback to 1400 for gold and you know who knows what it could be for silver yeah uh, yeah exactly the question is how do we get our hands on gold and it it feels like it's tough because we see the spot prices and then you go to buy the physical and you're like well it seems so out of whack it doesn't feel fair right it just seems so high but that's that's the reality of it and I would like to think that if the stock market sells off and we see metals crashing and, and pulling back to those levels, I would like to think there'd actually be more um, liquidity or we'd be able to get our hands on it because there will be a, a natural group of gold investor, people who've bought into gold who give up on it and they just want to start getting rid of their physical. They'll be like, I hate this. It's going down. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. And so if there's a lot of real panic, there will be a window where people are panicking and literally selling their physical. So there, I think there'll be a good window in there when for some liquidity or we'll be able to get our hands on physical. But uh, I think it will be a short window just when people are panicking because um, I think there was going to be a lot of people also trying to accumulate, suck up as much physical as they can, hopefully not at a crazy premium. So um, I think there's going to be an opportunity. You have to keep your your eyes and ears open to see when the premiums are a good deal and you know um, when there, you can actually get stuff like uh, that's the key part here. It definitely is uh, a key there. And it, it seems like the premiums are a market of their own. Typically when we often, when we see 
price the spot price fall you see the premiums increase um and vice versa often as well before we let you go uh chris are there any last thoughts you'd like to leave with our viewers and what are the main things they should be uh, any uh market analysts should be looking at right now yeah, I think the key here is to understand the big picture. What you and I talked about these uh, the stages, the the, the stage four decline. Um, these are life changing, life threatening uh, potential pullback. I think a lot of people still feel like they need to make money, and while yes, we want to make money each year, I think. This is the point in your life, especially if you're like 50 plus, you've got the most wealth you've ever had, you're close to retirement, you're already retired. You're way better to be protective, move it, move into cash or use a strategy, something that I use that allows us to avoid the corrections, profit from market uh, pullbacks uh, and, and play the upside. Um, because if you're not protecting your hard earned cash at this point and this does happen, if you're using like a buy and hold strategy or something, just plopped it in the market, you're you're potentially going to crush, kill your retirement plans. You're going to cut your account down. You're going to have um, all kinds of problems. You're going to be withdrawing money when it's when it's at a big drawdown, which really kills your potential down the road. It's the number one sequence of risk return is what it's called. People who withdraw in retirement when their money is is at a loss, it's been drawn down. It's is the number one threat and the reason why retirees run out of money early. Um, so it's about protecting your capital right now and not trying to go in and swing for the fences. Um, so that that's all I got to say is this is the point in your life that if you don't take the right action, you're going to be like, oh, I had such a good life and retirement set. And now everything changes. I have to downgrade things. You're way better to protect yourself than try to make money, a lot of money right now. What are the principles that people should consider if they're looking for protection for their assets uh, with regard to like holding cash versus holding uh, precious metals? Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of holding any asset that's falling in value. So more or less, if the markets are going down, I prefer I'll look for an asset that's going up. We'll look to bonds, which they haven't been in favor for a couple of years already. We'll look at the U.S. dollar uh, ETF, the U.S. dollar index which is nice because there's a, a, a long e ETF and there's an inverse. So it doesn't matter if the dollar is, is rocketing higher or plummeting. We can actually move to a position that is a really low volatility. The dollar moves percentage wise, very slow, um, but it's very consistent, very conservative. So we can still move into something like a cash position or a dollar index type of trade and grow our account while the world's kind of falling apart. Um, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of cash. I'm a huge fan of a currency play when everything else is haywire and really risky and all over the place. Um, physical, I, I hold a lot of physical and I'm not planning on selling any of it. I just keep slowly accumulating it. So if we see another big drop in metals, I'll look to buy more, but I don't sell my physicals just because the market's going up or down. Um, I more or less buy it as an insurance plan, just slowly keep adding to the stacks in case there's some crazy crisis and metals go through the roof and, and other things happen. It's more of a, I like holding and seeing physical metals. It's kind of like an addiction <laughs> and it's a little bit of an insurance plan and a little diversification. So I don't trade it. I just keep slowly adding, adding to my stack. I can see some metals behind you there. So <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> fantastic. I love well, uh, Chris, we really uh, appreciate having you on today and sharing your insights. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And the technicaltraders.com is where people can go if they're interested in finding more. Yeah, thanks. Well, appreciate it and take care. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, Metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. 
For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.